When CEOs or human resource professionals share their specific concerns about a leader who is experiencing challenges, their next question is almost always, do you think that coaching this individual will be effective? Most consultants and coaches will reply absolutely and then tell you about their successful projects. Unfortunately, our response sometimes disappoints our clients. We are painfully honest when we say, overall, coaching projects are 50% successful. About half the time, executives are excited about having a coach and want to learn how to become an even more effective leader. Some of the leaders we have coached have even risen to the most senior positions in their organizations, attributing their success directly to their coaching experience. The other half of the time, we work with a leader who is so busy doing the technical aspects of their job that the coaching is perceived as an inconvenience. Some of these leaders we have worked with eventually have been asked to leave their organization. You may be curious as to why some leaders are not highly motivated to improve their leadership skills. The reason is because many leaders have been rewarded in their career with promotions and bonuses for their past behaviors and results. And even though people give them feedback about their leadership strengths and opportunities for growth, they are not motivated to change. While we never want to discourage coaching, leaders with this attitude are typically unsuccessful in the coaching relationship. So, how do you know ahead of time if a leader will benefit from coaching? That can be answered by examining three things about the leader. First, is the leader a learner? The leaders we are asked to coach are most often high achievers and contribute a great deal of technical expertise to the success of their team and their organization. Clearly, they have been consistently open to learning in their areas of technical expertise. The question is, will they also be open to learning about how to be an even more effective leader and motivator of their team? Or do they see the people side of their business as a necessary evil? Two, can the leader accept feedback? If in the past this leader has been able to justify their behavior and blame poor outcomes on their employees or point fingers to other areas in the organization, a red flag should come up. To be successful, the leader must first acknowledge that for whatever reason, they are being perceived by others as less effective in a particular area of their leadership. Then they must be open to hearing new ideas from their coach about how to better manage their working relationships. Finally, they must be willing to put into practice new approaches and strategies that will help them to build even stronger, more effective workplace relationships. And three, is the organization serious about seeing this leader change? We have been most successful in our coaching partnerships when the organization was clear on their expectations or outcomes for coaching and then held the leader accountable for changing the behaviors that were negatively impacting the team. They were also equally clear that if the leader would not change, a determination would be made about whether that leader was a good fit for their organization. This may lead you to ask, is it even worth it to hire an executive coach? The answer is absolutely. 50% of the time, we coach leaders who take the coaching feedback and create significant leadership and organizational success because they want to learn. They are open to the feedback and the organization is serious about the coaching. It is our belief that this 50% success factor will far outweigh the coaching failures who suffer from a disease we call Popeye syndrome. I am what I am. 
If coaching does not work and the leader is unwilling to change, our advice is to share them with your biggest competitor and mess up their strategic plan.